What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. Tom Foster of Foster Web Marketing. Before I formally introduce Tom, uh, Tom, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out. And, you know, we were just together actually at a uh, mastermind. Um, I did, uh, I've interviewed Brian Kurtz a couple of times, who's one of the most generous, giving, nicest people, but he is a genius in the direct response uh, marketing world. So check out the interviews I did with Brian Kurtz. Um, I also interviewed Kim Walsh Phillips, who um, actually introduced us previous to even meeting at this live event. And she has an amazing episode. And she's also a genius when it comes to marketing. And uh, Vance Morris, who we were also hanging out with, who is amazing with customer experience. He worked at Disney for years. So check that episode out all on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. At Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. And Tom, how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. You know, for me, Tom, and I know for you, you have a podcast. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than to profile the people and companies I most admire on this planet. And over the past decade, that's what I've been doing. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com or email us at support at rise25.com. Happy to answer anything that you have. Uh, I'm excited. Tom Foster is a nationally recognized author, law firm, internet marketing services expert. He's the author of the seven biggest mistakes lawyers make with their web marketing that can cost them millions in cases, clients, and profits. He also has a book, How Smart Lawyers Are Using Video on the Web to Get More Cases Without Breaking the Bank. And he's got several other books as well. And Tom actually entered the world of technology initially to focus on sales and marketing in 1991 after serving a six-year tour in the Marines. Tom, thank you for your service. And he learned this his initial technology skills while being stationed in top secret military communication centers all over the world. So there's something to be learned from Tom, some of the stuff he cannot share because it's under lock and key, but he'll share some of it today. Um, and, you know, he had six you know, years in software solutions or retail chains such as Best Buy, CompUSA, um, and he runs Foster Web Marketing, which helps doctors and lawyers, you know, really just blow up their online sales, you know, get in front of people with, you know, from their, their market, digital marketing to their website to everything else. Tom, thanks for, for joining me. Wow, that is a clinic on how you do podcasting, Dr. Jeremy. Thank well, you so much for having me here. Wow. And, you know, you and I just became fast friends last week up in Connecticut at Brian Kurtz's place. You mentioned him. What a great guy. He's a great guy. Kim Walsh Phillips, Vance, great people, some of my favorite people in the world. Um, and I'm so happy to know you and so happy to be a guest on this podcast. And wow, you just, you just gave me a clinic. You just showed me how to do it. So thank you so much. Brother. Well, it's, it's much deserved, Tom. And I know there are some secrets you can't share of what you learned in the, in the Marines, but what are some of the, what are I've some, gotten so much, that was a long time ago. What are some <laughs> things that you remember learning? I don't know if there's a particular story that sticks out um, at the time. Maybe it was really tough but it, you still think back on that story that it was a big learning for you from the Marines. From the Marines? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I was in 85 to 91. I was in right before uh, Desert Shield. Um, you know, I think that, you know, I'm very proud of my Marine Corps experience. And uh, I think that the biggest takeaway from all of that is just being honorable and, um uh, doing what you say you're going to do. And um, you got to take chances. Uh, and, and that's the world that we're in. You know, the world that we're in today is much different world. Um, you know, I'm a marketing guy. 
I'm a sales and marketing guy. After I got out of the Marine Corps, I went right into sales and marketing. Right after, right, right after I got out of the Marine Corps, Jeremy, I got went into software sales. I did sold translation software, cold calling people, um, uh, doing that horrible kind of sales, and then ended up doing some uh, fax outs, fax blasts, uh, selling translation software. Uh, ended up hitting it um, and was very successful early on uh, and gotten in the software business. And then the software business went away. You remember CompUSA and Computer City? I remember when you used to go to software stores, you'd get in your car and go to a software store and you'd go in there and you'd buy your box of software. And then you would go home and you would take the floppy disks out of the box and install them in your computer. <laughs> because your computer was not hooked up to the internet or anything. There was no internet then. There was no internet. Remember those days? No internet. No phones. You were, you were early. Tethered. You were early in that. I was and early in the tech. Yeah. I mean, and one of the uh, main topics, Tom, I want to talk to you about, which we'll get to, which is um, firing yourself from yeah. all of your jobs at your company. You know, because any all I mean, many of the business owners, that's kind of what they strive to do, even though they don't realize it, you know, just to oversee everything and to have a business that has the pieces in place and the people helping with those pieces. So we'll dig into that. But just tell people about Foster Web Marketing and what you do. I gave you a little intro, but just go a little bit deeper on, on what you do there. So Foster Web Marketing is a digital um, marketing agency. We have our own custom software. It's not WordPress. It's called DSS. It's built on the Cold Fusion platform. Uh, we build websites uh, for any business, really, for anybody, really. Uh, but most of our clients are lawyers and doctors. That's where we, you know, had our most of our success. Um, but we've got gym owners. Um, that are very successful using the platform. Other kinds of bit, chiropractors, you're a chiropractor, got chiropractors using the platform. Um, and very successfully, it's a CMS, which is a content management system, CRM, a client relationship management system, lead management system, SEO tools, uh, review tools, uh, social media tools, everything that you need to do digital marketing uh, is in DSS. And where WordPress, you've got to plug in all this stuff to make it work right, uh, causing bloated code. Uh, it might look good, but it's very slow. With DSS, it's very fast, very efficient, very effective. And in the world of search, that's a very important game changer is that it works very well. Speed. So, yeah, speed is critical. And so our websites are very fast. Our clients' websites are very fast. And everything is custom. So we're kind of like a custom shop where people come when they have not had good experiences in other places. And I'm not saying, look, WordPress is fine for, for many, you know, many plate, you know, for lots of occasions. Uh, Click funnels, great. You know, works great for a lot of people, for sure. But our solution works great for our kinds of clients. And for in, in many circumstances, you might choose to use us uh, uh, for your digital marketing efforts. Does everything ClickFunnels and, 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 and WordPress does. So, so, so Tom, um, let me know if I understand this correctly. So some people come on, you'll build them the site, all the tools, they kind of this, this all-in-one solution built in. Yep. And some people will go, that's amazing. Thank you. And they'll run with it and then and we train and then some people how to use it. and then some people will be like i don't want to do this please do it for me and we have that's you know i got 50 people working for me and uh 25 of them are content writers so we write the content for the website uh 10 of them are are digital agency people seo people service we call them services and that's who do, who do the search engine optimization, optimize the, the website, optimize the Google My Business, the LSAs, you know, 
do the pay-per-click purchase. You know, those are the people that are doing the actual marketing, the online marketing piece. And so for those clients that don't want to do it, we can handle it for them. So that's what we found is, you know, we started out as a, here's the software, go do it yourself. And many of the, many do, you know, they like doing it themselves using DSS. Um, but then we have about a third that are like, forget it. I'd rather you do it for me. And uh, one of my biggest clients, great, QP and Abraham, this is who I was talking about. We were talking about earlier, Jason Abraham. Very successful personal injury firm in three states. Uh, QP and Abraham, they've been with me for what, 15 years now. Long time, very loyal. Uh, they've just been hugely successful. We've made them hugely successful organically uh, through paid, through the LSAs, through local. And that's really the business is making sure that, and, and this, that's a very competitive field, personal injury, personal injury, car accidents, motorcycle accidents, um, all of this terrible, you know, terrible events that happen. And you need, you need, you know, these people need good lawyers and Hubert and Abraham, you know, Jason Abraham and his team is some of the best, Wisconsin, Illinois, and, uh, and uh, Iowa. Do you get people, Tom, I could see how people are like, great. What made you at first decide to create this proprietary software? I mean, that's a big undertaking. You know, you could have kind of been like everyone else. Go, there hey. was nothing else. Yeah. WordPress didn't exist back then when I first started making it. And, and there was nothing else out there. You were basically building websites statically. And so I built that at the same time somebody else was building WordPress. Whoever did that, I don't know. Um, I'm, I, I should know. I, I should know. I think I it's know. Matt Mullenweg or there something, something like there that. There you go. We need to get him on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> um, do you have, um, do you have other agencies and people? I could see other agencies using your platform for their, yeah, we for their clients. Get, we, we're actually doing that. We're growing it to that so that other agencies could use DSS. Uh, that's a big initiative that we're working on right now. And, you know, you mentioned earlier on, you know, what, what I'm doing because I've really delegated out every, all my jobs. You know, I started doing everything and coding the website, designing the website, writing the copy, uh, doing everything, creating all the links, creating the structure, coding, you name it. I did it. Videos. I've done it all from A to Z. Now I have great people that do it much better than I could ever do it. And I fired myself from all jobs over the 20, 25 years that I've been doing this since Al Gore invented the internet. Um, I have fired myself from all the jobs and now I have great people, great people. Uh, uh, my CEO is Buster Tate, who has been, who's one of my best friends for God, 15 years now. He's my next door neighbor. He lives across the street from me. Uh, we became, you know, we became fast friends and I asked him to come on and help me run this company. He's got a uh, great experience in uh, the department of the Navy running uh, special services. And so I was able to lure him away from, from the Pentagon and uh, came to work for me years ago and has just done a fantastic job. I've got Gretchen Upright, who's my COO, who has been a project manager and building websites for me since God, for 15 years. And so I've got great staff of people that have been doing this. Um, and, you know, I just keep pushing this off of me and getting others that are better at, the, better at doing things than I am. Like I have a vision of, of how I want things to be. Um, Toby Crandall, he's my IT guy. He's been with me since the beginning. Um, he's getting the app built. So we're DSS is coming up with an app. We're about a third of the way through building this little app. 
which is not going to be a full, you're not going to be able to update your website with it, but you're going to get, you're going to be able to check your leads. You're going to be able to respond to your leads through it. You're going to be able to check your, you know, analytics, your dashboard, what's going on with your website, what's going on with your leads. You're going to get email scores, uh, all that kind of stuff. Th that's another thing in, in, in DSS, there's something that nobody else has, which is an email score. So in DSS, we score your email. So you, you know, you don't get in trouble and, you know, cause it, you know, emailing people, you don't want to get stuck in their, in their spam filter. And so I'm, I'm curious, help. you yeah. know, you know, I, I love what you're talking about, finding yourself from your jobs. And it seemed like a common trend. Um, I mean, Buster Tate, you had come in as CEO, but it seemed like some of the other people kind of moved up the ranks. Yeah. So are you, what's the training process like um, when someone does come on board and it seems like there's usually a lot of growth opportunity for them to move up in the yeah, company? Well, I've had people that come. Okay. So my Gretchen started as a project manager and now she's the uh, COO. Um, I've had you know, Joanna started a customer service. Now she's a project manager. She lives in San Diego. So that's another thing. So the pandemic was a terrible thing in many ways, but also good in many ways. We went virtual overnight. You know, I had a place in Fairfax where I had 30 people in Fairfax in an office in Fairfax, 5,000 square foot office. 30 people in it. When the pandemic hit, everybody went home. I paid rent on that place for two years. Nobody, nobody there. And, but we went virtual. We got more efficient, more effective. And now I'm able to hire people from all over the, all over the country. And uh, we're operating more, much more efficiently uh, virtually. It's incredible. I mean, we're a virtual company anyway. You know, we're connected digitally. Um, anyway, and so we've just been able to do it and we've been able to get talent. So we don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be in, you know, DC area. Um, and so the reason why I bring that up is that Joanna, who is a customer service who worked in the office, she's moving to San Diego. We were going to lose her. But instead of losing her, we were able to keep her and, and we, elevated her to uh, project management, gave her a big raise and uh, keep, kept her on as, and elevated her. And, you know, we're going to end up losing her at some point because she's getting her, she's going to be a doctor like you and hmm. um, become a, a, a therapist, a psychologist. So that's what she's going to school for ultimately. So we'll lose her eventually, but, you know, we, we, we have her for now. And, you know, that's, that's kind of a, that's the way of the world. You lose people, you get good people, you lose good people. I've lost a lot of great people over the years. A lot of great people that helped me build this company. Great people. Great people. Talk about, you know, retaining. What things do you do to help retain staff? Because I think with any company, there's good yeah. people. And maybe it's just that it runs the course right? Maybe they're, they're well, destined culture, to do something else, but yeah, your company culture is so important. Yeah. And, and it's really hard to do it nowadays, you know, over zoom. And, um, yeah, we just talked about this, you know, at the Titans thing, you know, like how do you maintain your company culture? You know, when you're doing your onboarding with your clients, you know, you're also doing onboarding with your staff and, you know, trying to keep them on, you know, happy and content, you know, besides just giving them a raise every year, obviously that's stuff you got to do. You got to give them good benefits and all that kind of stuff, treat them right, protect them. You know, that's one thing is treating them right, uh, with respect, uh, protecting them from the clients. A lot of times clients can get out of hand and you want to protect them and show that. So that's important. Um, we have game night every other week where we do like a game night and a lot of the staff show up. It's a virtual game night. Uh, we have meetings every morning 
like a virtual huddle. We do it over Zoom. Uh, every morning at 930, the whole company gets online and we just, the, the, uh, the leaders, the mar managers go over the, the three things that happened yesterday, the top three things that happened yesterday and the three things that are going to happen today. That's kind of the premise of it. We usually go over the whole list um, of what they did. Uh, but that kind of keeps everybody in the loop of what's going on. That's been a great thing. I recommend that to anybody. Do that kind of huddle every morning. That's kind of my, uh, that's something, you know, you asked me what some, a lesson from the Marines. That's something I took away from, you know, have an early, a early huddle, early morning. Um, so firing, and, so firing yourself, Tom, yeah. it seems like a daunting task, right? When you first decide, made that decision. Okay. I need to get myself out of these. What, what was the first thing that you got off your plate or hired for? Coding. 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 Like I got to stop Programming. this. So you got developer. So I did that a long CTO. time ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where, uh, um, Toby and Young Young came into play when went because I first wrote DSS and I quickly found like like it was great but it was a lot of power and I could break it really easily and the more I did the more the more important it became and the more I knew I needed to have somebody else working on this because I couldn't do it myself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I could see how far it needed to go. And so, although I might have started the very beginning of the CMS attitude with, with DSS, Young and his team, Young and Chris are on my team that work on it, uh, are the ones that have taken it so, so far beyond. It's such an, an amazing CMS. Um, so coding was first yeah. and was zero, uh, how did you prioritize it? Was it something that I just don't like doing it or I have a bigger vision for it? What was the premise behind almost out of necessity? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like I sat down and said, here, let me, like, I never do that. Like everything with me is, is, is a reactive, <laughs> is a reactive state. Um, no, we need to get somebody for this. We need to get somebody for this. And, and um, you know, uh, I think part of it is uh, out of necessity. Part of it is out of pain in the assness. Uh, you know, what you just to hate doing. What you're not good at. You know, I just, I got rid of all the stuff that I wasn't very, that, that other people were it, it, it was kind of easy to get rid of. And there was like mm -hmm. a list of people, you know, that are eager to do it, the coding, the designing, the project management, uh, the writing, I, you know, I had people, no problem, no problem getting content, right. You know, getting all that whole thing going. And, um, we've always been, been very proud of our content writing. You know, we do great content and that is, you know, that people take that for granted, but, you know, I've got a content shop, you know, I got 25 people that write content and edit content, uh, for, we do, you know, probably a thousand pieces of content a month. That's not insignificant for lawyers to put out there on the web, to get found organically, to get cases, to help people. And that's what it is. You know, to help people, you, either it's an injury or an estate plan or, or, you know, DUI or whatever. And it's the content that gets them, gets them the help they need. So I'm very proud of that, that we've been able to establish that. Um, that was kind of an early, yeah, no, no brainer. Like we need good writers to do that stuff. What was a hard thing, Tom? So you're like, I was hate the doing thing this. To give up? Yeah, the hardest thing to give up. Sales and marketing. Sales and marketing. That because that's me. That's kind of my um 
And that's still the, cause I, that's the one that I tend to jump right back in and be like, okay, this, I, I need to get back in there. <laughs> cause that's the interesting part, right? It's the stuff. Yeah. I, I love that. And we should all think about what do we hate doing? What, what are we not as good at or bring someone else? And what's a necessity? Like there's a pain point there. But then we get into the, we bleed a little bit into the, well, I really like doing the sales or I like doing this, but in order for you to oversee the whole company, yeah, you found you needed to get yourself out of that. So what were some of the steps of how you stepped into taking the sales and the marketing off of your plate? Well, I'm still in the middle of doing that, I think. I'm not quite done. I'm still trying to do it. Um, I'm not yet completed that. And it's not something that I am, uh, like, it's not like I'm like, I want to do the sales and marketing. And I, and no, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to get it, other people to do it. Uh, better than me. And so, and I'm not even saying that I was so great at it. You know, I was, I was, I'll give myself a B plus. Uh, but, you know, I want somebody, I want my team to be A plus people. And so my job now is to create the A plus team. Um, they're not quite there yet. Uh, I just had a meeting yesterday with them about, you know, we got to be an A plus team. And, um, you know, that takes, we have a different mind. It's a different world today. The, the internet is different. The, the, the mindset is different for why do you need a website? You know, when we first got into this, the websites were new. The web was new. And so people were running to the web and said, I need a website. Can I get one from you? Nowadays, everybody has a website. So that's not what the ask is anymore. The ask is, I need new clients. Oh, do you have a better website than what I have now? And you've got to get somebody to think about that. And that's not as easy as I need that new thing that you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. You know, you have decades of yeah. knowledge. E even before, like you had the, you know, foster web marketing, you were doing sales with the yeah. software. And so when you think of transferring that knowledge of your knowledge and expertise into someone else, and maybe they, they come with their own, but you know, you have specific nuances a little bit to how you like things done, or you have found them to be done. How do you train and transfer that to the next team, your, your new sales in, in marketing team? Lots of yapping, lots of talking, lots of discussions. Um, but you said it. I want them to uh, bring in their own experience. So, for instance, uh, just hired a guy that is an experienced uh different kind of sales person than me um, and my brother who's, who's, who's Chad, my brother, who's been with me for shit, 10, 15 years. I don't even know. Long time uh, as the sales guy. Uh, he's a different kind of sales guy. He's a, um, he's more of a trapper, you know, Leads come in, he, he, he closes the leads, but he needs leads to come in. Tom W., Tom Williams is another guy named Tom, so we call him TW. He's more of a hunter. He's more out there networking and looking for opportunities. He's out there cold calling. He's out there. So he's a different mentality. That's something that I've done before as well, but I'm interested interested in seeing, I want to see how you do this. I don't want you to do what I've done because what I've done got us here and, and isn't necessarily getting us to the next level. I'm looking to you to get us to the next level. 
And so at this point, it's a great question because at this point, really, it's not about me teaching people because I've taught Molly, Molly McCormick, who's my marketing director, who's in the Titans group. Um, I, and who actually started out, she's been with me for what, nine years now? She started out as customer service and then came to marketing, left me for a little bit, then came back because she was like, it's so horrible out there and so wonderful with you. <laughs> That's a big compliment. Yeah. And the biggest uh, compliment you can get, probably. I agree. And she's fantastic. And I've trained her in, in how to do marketing. And so she does it my way or our way, or, and the, which is direct response. And that we've got, I feel. You, you can always tweak copy. You can always, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we do. But I'm interested in, because it's a whole new world these days, as I said. It's a whole new world. And I, I do think that we have to change our messaging right now. We have to change our also. offering. Oh, well. Because it's, we have to come up with something new. We have to come up with something exciting. We, we have to come up with something to get people's attention. Because right now, there isn't anything new. The, the internet has, there's nothing new on the internet. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we have any, we don't have a new social media platform to go to, to say, now this is Insta, new Instagram. You know what I'm saying? It, this is new TikTok. There's nothing new right now. So you have to invent something to get them excited. So what is their pain? What are they going through? Because everybody's going through the same thing. They will all want, we all want it. What do we all want? We all want more leads and sales. Everybody, constantly. That's constantly our pain. So that's the message is, oh, by the way, FWM and my platform is the way to get you more leads and sales. <laughs> but we have to reformulate that message. And that's the same message that you give over and over again in different, different candy, different pies, different packages. Yeah. And that's part of it. Yeah, Tom, I think I love what you're saying because you've kind of started it and did everything. And then you, you basically took things off of your plate um, and took things off of the pl your plate that you did not like doing, maybe because someone was better at you doing, but then that it comes to a point where you're really good at something, but you still want to take it to the next level. So bring on more people. And, and I like how you kind of segment the sales piece, which is there's a different personality probably of a hunter and a trapper, right? Someone's out there going to get them and you have two, because you probably did both of those things, right? You yeah. go out there, you, you generate the interest in the leads, and then you'd you know, close those leads. And now you kind of have two separate personalities doing that. I'm trying both. Whereas before I existed in one world, which is kind of the trapper, you know, that's what direct response is, is that it's a kind of a trapper kind of world. Now I'm, I'm doing this new thing. Another thing that I want to mention uh, that we haven't talked about is the fact that I got involved in EOS. And that has been huge. Huge. And uh, I've been, I think we're on eight months now, eight months, eight or nine months EOS. And I absolutely love this, this, the entrepreneur operating system yeah. and the book traction. Yeah. I've had Gino Wickman on the podcast. You can check of out. Of course that you have, because you're the man. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. I, that is so cool. Jeremy, you're, you're the man, Dr. Jeremy, Dr. Jeremy. You're the man. You got everybody on your podcast. Tony Horton, too. Dude, I am in awe of you. So I'm in awe of being on your podcast. Thank you so much. Well, I'm in awe of you fighting yourself from all your positions and everyone else should be also. <laughs> <laughs> but EOS is, I mean, everyone raves about uh, EOS and, and running their company in EOS. And so well, that's you part want of the reason why I fired yeah. myself is like EOS has kind of driven me to do that as the visionary. And, you know, I, as we work on it, it is just logical. Yeah. 
So I encourage people to check out the book Traction, Gino yeah. Wickman. I also um, maybe will link up. I did an episode with Mark Winters um, of Rocket Fuel, uh, and he co-wrote wow. Rocket Fuel with Gino I Wickman. So right check there. out. Yeah, because you were talking about the visionary and there's a visionary integrator and kind of the premise behind Rocket Fuel is actually that you need both of them together to yep. go to the moon, right? Buster's my integrator. So yeah. we love it. And EOS has changed and uh, changed our lives. Ross Foka is our coach. He's just done a great job. Um, and that's really what has propelled. and what. And kind of how I got into that is that, you know, I was, I was approached last summer to sell the company. And uh, that was great for my ego. And I loved it. And, uh, but what happened was it wasn't enough money. It wasn't enough. It wasn't what I, as much as I wanted. Um, it would have been great for me, but it wasn't going to be enough for everybody else. So. And it, and it also kind of exposed what a mess the company was, was just kind of the way it was. And that's yeah. what I was like, I got to get my shit together here. Yeah. I mean, a mess spot. is mess is, uh, I mean, you're a modest guy. A mess is a little bit strong, but, but really, you know, things that you were doing, you know, cause when you sell the company, you're not going to be there forever. So they want other people there to carry it on. So you need to remove yourself from certain things. Well, that's kind of what I was involved in too many things. And I was kind of in there too much. And yeah. that's what I mean by a mess. Yes. And we, we needed to get it organized. That's why we got EOS. And we wanted to create an, or, an organized company that was more valuable and we wanted to drive it from the 6 million that it is to 20 million by 2027. So that is the goal is to drive it to 20 million. And uh, we're working towards that goal. It's amazing. Um, I have one last question, Tom, before yeah. I ask it. Um, I want to point people to your website. All right. Yeah, um, you know, you can go to fosterwebmarketing.com to learn more. And it's funny, you know, full circle. So I had Gina Wickman on, I had Mark Winters on, then I had um, the Firefly group, um, David Mann and Derek Smith, who bought, uh, bought EOS. So it was interesting to hear what they looked for and how that went in the purchase when they were chatting with Gino to, to buy it. So it was a really interesting episode. My wow. last question, Tom, is about, you know, just to people get a sense a little bit more. Um, I mean, I think we have about what you do, but there was one um, particular case uh, with Peter Wishney. I think it yeah, was Peter Wishney. Well, Peter Wishney is one of my doctors. Well, I call him the Godfather. He's a good friend of mine. He's a podiatrist up in New Jersey, Piscataway. But he's not just any podiatrist. He just sold his firm, his practice. For millions and millions, which is what every podiatrist dream, and he started out he's just a smart doctor businessman. He's written his own book. I, I, I'm sorry, Peter. I don't remember the name of the book, but um, he's written his own book too. You should get him on the on this podcast too. By the way, uh, sounds I'll good to me. You to him, doctor, two doctors, but. Um, yeah, Peter Wishney, he is in the process of selling his practice. Brad Schaefer is also a client and works with Peter or did work with Peter before they sold. Brad Schaefer is the guy on the, is the uh, famous podiatrist uh, on the learning uh, TLC. It does the, uh, the hot, that, that super hot podiatrist that all the girls like. I think this is the book. I think uh, the podiatry practice business yeah. solution but practice is crossed out yep yep exactly that's yes. it so what did you do with what did you do with um peter well we did his website we do his website and um before he became so big you know he was just a fledgling doctor but uh interesting story so uh he came to us years ago 
and we helped with his digital marketing. He had a, uh, a, a marketing person there named Jessica. Uh, and she did all, all the work, the content, all the, all the, we taught her how to do it. She became an expert. When he, when he sold the podiat, when he sold his practice, uh, Jessica came to work for us. <laughs> so now Jessica's a coach at FWM, which is great. And he's, you know, he's in the middle of selling the practice to uh, this bigger, you know, whatever this, this firm that's gobbling, this bigger practice is gobbling up. We're hoping to get websites from them. So we'll see what happens. But he's been one of our very, and that's what's happening in the podiatry world is that, you know, these practices are getting gobbled up. So well, Tom, we're helping them. This is amazing. Them. I just want to be yeah. the first one to thank, thank you. you for sharing your journey, sharing some of the things that have worked really well throughout your career and your company. And I want to just point everyone to check out fosterwebmarketing.com. Uh, thanks, everyone. And, and check out more episodes. And thanks, Tom. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Dr. Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It reflects between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.